Welcome everyone to this CUBE conversation on Alation's The State of Data Culture Maturity. It was a research report that they recently finished up. I'm your analyst and host, Rob Stretche. I'm joined today by Julie Smith, Director of Data and Analytics with Alation. Welcome, Julie. Hi, Rob, good to be here. Glad to have you on board, because I think this is super exciting information. Uh, the CUBE research uh, that I'm an analyst part of, we really look at this and look at how people are building data products, how they're really bringing AI to bear in their organizations. And a lot of that has to do with being able to have the right data in that product, in that AI, so that you get the right results. And I think, you know, today, I'm excited that we're going to unpack uh, some of the research Alation has done on this front, because I think that really that is one of the big keys. So let's kind of jump into it and, you know, why don't you kind of give an overview of who Alation is and tell us a little bit more, the next level down on the state of data culture maturity research report that you just finished up. Well, absolutely. Um, so Alation's business is helping organizations find, understand, and trust data. Um, and we do that using our, our data catalog, our data intelligence platform. Um, and believe it or not, I was a customer of Alation before I came to work for Alation to perform their, their data analytics function internally for them. So I actually represent inside Alation what our customers go through, what our customers are seeking. Um, and I think Alation, something that attracted me to Alation as a, as a company, as, um, as a proposition, was the fact they recognized some time ago the pivotal role that people and data culture play in an organization's success, in particular to organizations that want to become data-driven and use data in other ways, with AI being the most recent uh, evolution of that. Um, you know, We've seen our own customers, who range from Fortune 100 customers down to small to medium enterprises, face similar challenges in slightly different guises. And we wanted to understand a little bit more about that. Um, so since 2020, Alation have been doing research into data culture um, and the trends inside there and the perception of it um, by industry professionals. Um, so this year, we went out to almost 300 industry professionals. Um, and these are not all Alation customers at all. Um, they are very widespread so that we're not getting any sort of um, leanings in the data towards people who are already owning a data catalog. Um, and, uh, and we've got the results to see now. And speaking as someone who is a data professional, I find it really interesting to, to see these things out there in the wider world. Um, you know, it could be pretty isolating if we didn't get to talk to other professionals in networking and also reading these reports and seeing people like me and, and their, you know, perception of what's happening. Um, it gives you a good sense about what's out there, that you're not the only one fighting challenges and similar. And uh, and yeah, um, you know, how we can progress this and, and see what challenges are, are out there and how they're going to get uh, solved. I, I think that is key because I think that it is so, it, it data catalogs aren't necessarily new, but I think what how they're being utilized and how, the importance of them has just grown immensely over the last a uh, year, you know, since we just went by ChatGPT's birthday and all of that and how people build data products to be able to be used. And I think those new personas, and I think it's, we're still in early days from, as you were talking about, uh, organizations really having a data culture. Uh, so, you know, let's dive into the findings. The report found that building data culture is fundamental and necessary for organizations aiming to thrive and drive business success in a digital age, uh, which is just key as people are going through their di digital transformations and they're trying to build data products, sometimes off existing data, sometimes off net new data, data across different silos. And, and I think this was some of the key elements of what a mature data culture and how can organizations measure their progress in that journey was really some of the things that you uncovered was here's some of the kind of the KPIs that people can utilize to measure themselves. And that's it. Well, as data people, we always like to measure ourselves against things. And I think the, 
thing about data culture, although it's an often used term now, is it can be hard to sort of get a handle on it and to articulate exactly what it involves and, and therefore to measure yourself against that. Um, and so actually on, on building on our, our research uh, into the state of data culture over recent years, um, we've now devol- developed our own sort of data maturity uh, framework, um, which looks at, at four different pillars. So we look at leadership, which we look at the, the drive from the top to promote the use of data, be that from your CDOs, CDAOs, whatever guys that is, but is there a strong leader in the organization to help permeate that and who else in the leadership roles in the organization are helping to, to drive that. Then there's governance, data governance, um, which is evolving a lot uh, and much more rapidly these days um, than it has for some time in to enable us to use data. Um, it's about compliance, yes, but it's also about facilitating the use of data and, and giving so much more value to it. Um, yeah. There's data literacy, um, understanding the data, what it can do, what it is telling you, how to respect it in the entire life cycle it might have. And finally, the one that I think probably was the the thing that, you know, elation sprung from in the first place, which was the data search and discovery. Um, because, you know, you might have great data out there, but if people don't know where it is, the context of it, you know, how to access it, then they're not going to be able to be data driven because they have no data to be driven by. Yeah. No, I think yeah. you, you hit you hit on two really key, I think really key and important pieces of this. And when we start to talk to data professionals ourselves and, you know, from data engineering, data developers, you know, you had app app developers. Now we see this role of data developer coming about where it's somewhat of a hybrid of data engineering. You have platform engineering, you have data platforms. It's very complex. And I think not only that, it's not like all of this is net new data. So what are the challenges companies are facing when they're trying to integrate data governance, you know, which is not the easiest thing in the world, into existing systems? And how are they looking or how can they overcome these challenges of bringing that data governance to already existing data? I think that, um, you know, the, the technical challenges behind data governance um do exist and you know having to try and, and, and drive those changes into them and you know getting alignment on definitions and, and the compliance side of it and, and access and security and so on and so forth um but you know when we're um, interacting with people and those data governance professionals around you know what are their biggest challenges you have in implementing this um and the the, the main answer the top answer that comes back is people um is the data culture and um, you, you know, technically, they quite say we know what to do. <laughs> it's it's getting that understanding of what's involved and how that governance will work. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I, I think we hear the same thing. It's not necessarily the technology; it's the people and the processes that you wrap around the technology or enabled or are enabled by the technology. Um, but I, I think there's you had some really good. You know, I read through I, the report, got an early look at it, which was I really appreciate because I think there's some really key data points in the report. The report found a link between data leadership and revenue returns with 89% of respondents with strong data leadership say their organization met or exceeded revenue goals in the past year. Kind of walk us through some of the data points that you found in this. Yeah, so I mean that's quite an overwhelming figure, isn't it? The the that 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 figure, that overwhelming number, you know, especially in the current climate, gain that so much more more benefit. And it, I think it just underlines the fact that using good data to inform decision making results in good decisions. Um and that strong leadership will influence the progress on all those pillars of data culture to try and achieve those results. Um, you know, this is the stuff when people talk about being data driven, it's those kind of results coming out of this that that vindicate the whole effort being put in there. Um, and some of the results that especially came out um, of our of our um, survey was about how the transition now is that data governance is so much more about business value and showing that and it's less about compliance and otherwise. And so people are now listening to the, the data leadership that's coming in. 
and it's showing that business value. It's showing the benefits to the business of what it can do for all them. No, that's key. And I think, to, you know, again, what you highlighted earlier on, having that top-down buy-in for governance and for all of this and data leadership in particular and building that culture from the top down, not just from the bottoms up building of applications and data products is really key. Um, I also think, you know, again, taking the next step down into some of the data, you know, modern organizations also have a heightened focus on data governance with 70% of the respondents sharing that their organizations are focused on improving governance in the coming year. What emerging trends in data governance and culture should organizations be prepared to be able to be and stay competitive in this market? Yeah, I mean, as you recognize there, 70% of the respondents were recognizing that they wanted to build on their data governance. But the other part of the statistics that came out there was only a quarter of them felt they'd actually achieved widespread data governance. So there's a huge scope for people to carry on improving in this area. And I think it's this evolution of data governance now. You know, the, the perception of data governance, well, the word governance <laughs> it gives this sense of it's the Ministry of Data. They're here to put the shackles on us. It's all about compliance. It's all about, you know, auditing, et cetera, et cetera. And, and now people are realizing that actually it is about the business value that can be unlocked. And that if you have well-run data, you know, it can provide you with so much more advantage than data that isn't looked after and isn't of good quality and similar. And um, we're seeing what we classified as defensive data governance, where it's there to protect the organization from fines um, to offensive, which is we're using this to gain our competitive advantage. We're using it to get our data in good shape so that we really can exploit it for the asset it really is. Um, I think something else we're seeing as well is is that you know you've got centralized models for data governance. We're seeing more of that become federated as people within the business organizations realize that they can possibly get more adaptive and flexible about how things are, are performed in those different areas. And um, and I think that you know the more people understand around it, the more that model will become common as people embrace it rather than defensive around it and don't want it to, to come into their areas. Yeah. Um, you mentioned AI, um, and you know this is it's one of those hype cycles. You know, it's another trend that's coming in, and um, but I love the fact that it suddenly focuses its attention on our data and what AI can possibly do for people. And I think that it is trends like that, which is showing people the possibilities of what they can do with their data, that helps the data governance. Um, cause, if you like, um, that has so many more, more wider benefits. And so the, the need for AI, I'm hoping, we'll see, will drive data governance improvement. By that same token, better data governance can drive better AI because for trusted AI, you need trusted data. And it's that foundation that we still need for all of these things. Um, so I see that data governance is, is going to be much more prominent because people realize we need this for this AI. Um, and whichever next technology comes in, <laughs> to absolutely get us well, all excited. Let's kind of jump into the modern organization is really changing, and also having to have an, I, I would say, a heightened focus on data governance. And I think one of the stats that really jumped out at me was that seventy percent of respondents shared that their organizations are focused on improving governance in the coming year. What emerging trends in data governance and culture should organizations be prepared for to stay competitive in this market? I, I think it's huge as people look at where they're going in the future and how they build these data products and AI, what should they really be focused on? Yeah, that, the, the study you came up with there, which is the 70% of the um, organizations are looking to strengthen their data governance. Um, which we've highlighted in our, our report, there was also another stat in there that showed that only a quarter of organizations felt they had widespread governance. And, and how long has governance been about for that to be the case? Um, but I think there's a, a, a new change in the perception of data governance, and that has led to this 70% now actually concentrating and, and making it one of their priorities. And yeah. um, people are realizing 
data governance is no longer just compliance. It is about business value. It is about the advantages that having well-run data can provide to you. Um, we used to have what is now regarded as defensive data governance, where you are fending off fines from various organizations. Um, when actually now we're looking at offensive data governance. Um, I don't mean it's insulting. I mean, it's actually trying to get better to an advantage via the use of data to achieve, you know, your, your business um, priorities and objectives. Um, what we're also seeing is, is as the business becomes more aware of the advantages it can give, you're not looking at a monolithic data governance organization, very much centralized. I mean, they'll still exist, but there'll be a federated model with more people doing governance in areas of the business. And, and that, I think, will help it permeate more readily through the business. Um, than it might have done pr previously. Um, I think that we've mentioned AI. I don't think any webinar at the moment doesn't mention AI. <laughs> um, and there's a huge focus on it, and I love the focus because I love not purely for, for AI and the possibilities that it's going to garner people working with data and, and businesses, et cetera, um, but it's the attention it's focusing on the need for good data um, because people are realizing um, that you need trusted data for trusted AI. And again, this is going to help the data governance cause and the, the overall data cause um, to feed the fact that, well, for good AI, we need better governance. So let's put input into our governance so we can then trust our AI. So the two are kind of pulling each other along because the need for AI in the current hype cycle that we see at the end there and then what it's dragging us forward with data governance um, but also data governance, the more forward thinking we are around that, the more it will pull on what we're able to do with AI. So the two are going hand in hand. And I think that the focus that it's having and the imagination that it's capturing out there um, in people who perhaps aren't particularly data people, but had a go at chat GPT and similar, <laughs> um, they're really starting to, to, to get the picture. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited by what it's going to yield. Yeah, I, I think there's two very important things you, you hit on. One is kind of almost what we've talked about with security, which is there was a shift left and it becomes a federated security model where the developers have to take on more of that responsibility. I think you're dead on with the, the data governance. It, it's got to be that way. It can't be one monolithic. Uh, you know, there can be, I think, standards put out centrally, but they have to actually be that federated uh, governance. And I, I think it's going to take a good amount of tooling to actually make that happen in a really uh, efficient manner. And I think the second part you hit on with AI is that it definitely has raised, and we, we're hearing it from the organizations we talk to, uh, I'm sure you're hearing it from every organization, is how do I understand what data is going into my AI? Where is it from? What is its lineage? How do I understand and you know, I understand the quality because garbage in, garbage out. Uh, and depending on what you're using that AI for, that use case becomes critical. Same thing with building data products. If you built, you can always build a data product one way and def, you know, depending if you're using AI or even analytics or what have you, you may get a separate answer that you was unexpected, uh, which really is not what is intended. So, um, but I, I think let's kind of jump back to uh, the data culture because I think really this is a place where I think jumped out at me in this report was organizations seem to not yet have embraced a data culture. They're building data products, but maybe not in a data culture way. Uh, you know, what advice would you give to organizations that are starting their journey towards a data-driven culture? I would say do not underestimate it um, because there's, this, there's this, this situation which is technology, that's pretty straightforward to deal with. People, on the other hand, which make up the culture, they're always going to be hard because not one size fits all. You need to adapt approaches. You need to empathize with them and understand where they're going to. Um, you can have the most amazing data strategy laid out for where you want to go, how you want your data to be used, where you're going to source your data from, how you're going to assess its quality and other things around that. 
But if you haven't thought about the change management around that and the involvement of the people so that they're going to feel ownership around it and what they're going to understand around it. Well, I'm afraid that Peter Drucker's uh, saying of culture eat strategy for breakfast <laughs> can come to fruition. Um, so, you know, tackle it head on. Make sure you're raising the people elements as part of your strategy and your drive forward. Um, measure where you are now, though, as well. I mean, you know, we discussed earlier about the, we've created this framework with the sort of four pillars, which you can sort of gauge yourself against. Having that ability to look at it and show progress as well, because culture can sometimes be such an intangible thing. But having a way of measuring it, having a way of understanding it and showing that progress is a great benefit because if you can show progress, it encourages more progress and the benefits that you're yielding from it. So it's not going to happen overnight, you know, but if you can get that strong leadership across the org, if you can put appropriate provisions in place for data literacy, if you can modernize your data governance program to make it appealing and not sound like you're putting the shackles on everybody. And, you know, that will newly empower your workforce to go out and discover that data and trust that data to the right level. And it will serve them so much the better. And, it, you know, it can become self-fulfilling as, as people see the success that areas are having, they will themselves want that success. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And I, I think, again, this is one of those things where I think the rise of AI actually helps in this because people are very interested in what's going on with data, with their data and things of that nature. And I, I think organizations really are super interested in how they bring their organizations to think differently about data. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that has to be one of the keys that you see with your within your customers and within this study. Yeah, indeed. I mean, you use the term there, the rise of AI, which which sparks in my head the terminator, the rise of the machine. Um, and, <laughs> you know, I mean, data literacy can can help people understand a bit more about what we're talking about when we talk about AI. Um, and, you know, there's a balance with it there, isn't there? Because you can have people who will blindly follow it and not question what is being generated versus those who will be incredibly sceptical about it because they don't fully understand what's going on. Um, so good education, good understanding of what's happening and what's being fed into it and the context in which to take the results um, will we'll definitely yield a, a pair out from for anybody using it. Totally agree. Well, Julie, I really thank you for coming on this CUBE conversation today. Uh, you know, again, the insights you're bringing from the data and from having been the customer uh, are, are key. Thank you very much, Rob. Um, it's been a pleasure. And thank you all for tuning in to this CUBE conversation. For more insights on data, data organization, data products, data platforms, data here, data there, data everywhere, in this fast evolving area, stay tuned. I'm Rob Streche, your analyst and host. You're watching the Cube, the your leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.